Okay, so again, if you're not familiar with how I do these types of reviews sometimes, I'm going to give my overall thoughts at the beginning, then there's going to be a really big spoiler section in the middle, uh, and then I'll wrap things up with some other, uh, uh, well, basically just give the itinerary. Uh, um, so yeah, there'll be a quick spoiler-free bit here. Well, mostly spoiler-free. I won't get too deep into it, but uh, yeah, like I said, I'll give my overall thoughts, then a big, big, big spoiler section where uh, it'll be more kind of blow-by-blow. Blow. I shot that over several weeks, which is why you'll see me changing shirts and everything. So, okay. Also, yes, I am aware that I refer to Isaiah Bradley as Isaiah Washington the first time through, so you don't have to point that out. I correct myself, and I keep trying to correct myself as best I can. So, uh, anyway... Um, overall, my thoughts on Falcon and the Winter Soldier, um, I'm going to give this miniseries a B. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. I really liked a lot of it. I thought there were a lot of really good points. However, I'm left wondering if this maybe would have worked a lot better if it had been three, like, two-hour-long episodes or something like that effect, like three two-hour-long movies instead of one six, or, you know, six-hour-long episodes. Um, if that made any sense at all. It's just, uh, if you remember my uh, review of the first episode, I said there was a little too much world building, there wasn't enough uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And it's not quite the opposite by the end, but there's a lot that just feels kind of tacked on. Like, um, this thing ended about 15 minutes before it really ended, if that makes any sense. And there's a lot of filler material and a, a stinger scene. Again, I'm not going to get too spoilery in this bit, but... Still, it's like, I wonder if it would have worked a lot better if, like, say, the first two episodes were one thing, and then the second two episodes were one thing, and then the last, you know, and then episode three and four, and so forth, yeah, five, and then five and six. Because I think that would have helped, um, that would have helped a lot with the world building, because the world building was good, the action scenes were good, but they were never good at the same time, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, it just, it led to a bit of a choppiness, and this episode felt oddly rushed. The last episode in particular felt oddly rushed. So, yeah, that's why I'm going to just give it a B instead of a full A. Secret Wars, what's Dr. Drew's mission, Secret Shield? Ah, Zap Captain America, what's my Doom Roller? Dr. Doom, Doom Roller, Turbo Cycle, and Captain America each sold separately. Batteries not included. Let's roll, Doom Roller. That Ferris wheel can't stop the Turbo Cycle. Change course, Doom Roller. Now, Turbo Cycle, you're doomed. Doom Roller and Turbo Cycle vehicles from the Marvel Superhero Secret Wars collection, each sold separately. Action figures also sold separately. New from Mattel. Okay, so again, this is my big uh, recap section for Falcon and Winter Soldier. We're going through episode by episode in these uh, separate video segments. Uh, again, there are going to be big spoilers from this point onward, so you've been warned. Okay? All right. Uh, so episode two deals a lot with... Uh, basically, we finally get some Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, we also get some nice uh, building for John Walker, uh, a.k.a. U.S. Agent, a.k.a. the new Captain America. Uh, at this point, he's the new Captain America, so... Uh, we get that he's sort of trying, that he he wants to be the best Captain America he could be, but right now he's kind of being used a little bit more for PR and uh, recruitment propaganda, which, in a way, kind of makes sense, because it harkens back to Captain America, the first Avenger. You know? <laughs> like I said, that's what happened in that movie, too, where... You know, he gets the super soldier serum, but he's just going around doing the, hey, you know, buy a war bond. It puts a bullet in your best boy's gun. Um, sadly, they're not selling war bonds in this one, but you get the idea. Um, and we also find, like I said, we finally get uh, Bucky and Falcon working together as they're doing reconnaissance on the Flag Smashers. Uh, they're fi they find them uh, stealing some type of vaccine in Europe, and it turns out all of these people have been dosed with super soldier serum. And... Uh, of all people, uh, the new Captain America, John Walker, and uh, Lamar, oh, I forget what his last name is, uh, but he becomes Battle, he's Battlestar, the new Bucky. Um, you go, Comic Drake did a whole video explaining that uh, scenario, so I'd suggest go watching that for now. But, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the new, yeah, so Battlestar, who's uh, the new Captain America sidekick, and Bucky is upset because... He said, he tells Sam, Steve wanted you to take that shield. You didn't let him down. You let, yeah, you didn't let yourself down. You, yeah, it's not because you, you didn't let, yeah, I'm trying to 
find the way to phrase it. I'm sorry. Um, he's basically, yeah, when you you didn't let him down, you let me down, you let him, yeah, you let him down, you let everyone down. You gave it up because you didn't think you were worth it. But, you know, he believed in you and I believed in you and, you know, I don't know exactly, like, I'm tr sitting here actually trying to redeem myself, trying to be a good person. You actually are one, and you're forsaking that. <laughs> exactly. So why should I even be trying to be a good person at this point? And it seems to actually humanize them a little bit. And after they discover that the Flag Smashers are super soldiers, that they're, you know, they go to Balta and, again, sort of hammer home why Sam should have taken the shield and what he needs to represent, they meet... Uh, Isaiah Washington, who, uh, in the comics, this is a little different. Okay, so, uh, in the comics, there was actually a Captain America before Captain America. Sorry, the cat's making noise. Um, but, um, yeah, there was a Captain America before Captain America. It was a story called Truth, Red, White, and Black, where, uh, an Isaiah Washington was dosed with super soldier serum, and he was sent on it, but the country basically turned his back on him because he was black. Uh, it was meant to be analogous to the Tuskegee syphilis experiments. So yeah, you get these you know, people who, whose kind of lives were sort of ruined by all of this. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they kind of tweak it around a little bit. And he was actually, a, Isaiah was actually a Captain America after Captain America because they tried another variation of the Super Soldier Serum. And, you know, uh, but again, they turned his back on him, they threw him in a jail, they just did tests on him. Um, I don't know how much uh, the Luke Cage series from Netflix pans into this because uh, that's a whole other subject for a whole other video we don't have time to get into. But yeah, again, in the comics too, like the Luke, what happened with Luke Cage also ties back into the Captain America Super Soldier, Super Soldier Serum, as does Wolverine. <laughs> because yeah, uh, the adamantium process was another variation of that. So. Yeah, the idea is Captain America was Weapon 1, Isaiah Washington was Weapon 0, and then we kind of build through, there's like Weapon 2, Weapon 3, Weapon 4. Uh, I believe Weapon 5 might have been Luke Cage, it might have been 4 or 5, I can't remember exactly. And then uh, Weapon 10, or Weapon X, was Wolverine, so that's how that kind of scenario all plays out. Um, but yeah, just kind of a unique little factoid there. Uh, and unfortunately, in the pro process of all of this, it turns out that Bucky missed a therapy session, and he, you know, he gets arrested. And Sam actually gets racially profiled, but then Bucky gets arrested because he has the, you know, he missed the therapy session, so there's an outstanding warrant on him. And the therapist is basically saying, "Look, you and Sam need to work together, and you two need to get over your, what well, your quibbly little BS right now." And that's where they kind of have their big revelation. And then we kind of jump back to the Flag Smashers and what they're trying to do. They're trying to transport some medicine. However, it turns out they themselves are being tailed by someone called the Power Brokers. And they and the Flag Smashers just barely managed to escape with some medicine that they're trying to get to some relievement camps because, again, you're getting more of this post-blip uh, affected Marvel Cinematic Universe at this point where, again, everyone came back, but... You know, we're, you, you know, the world had moved on. It had been five years, so you're getting the whole idea that, yeah, we have all these people that we don't have places for anymore. And we're all kind of stuck in this, yeah, what do we do with these people? They don't deserve to have been left behind, but we have to leave them behind because we sort of left them behind already. Uh, and kind of from all that... Uh, you know, uh, also, I will say this, uh, like, um, Falcon, Winter Soldier, uh, Captain America, and Battlestar do work together a little bit, and, you know, John Walker is trying to be nice, he's trying to be friendly, you know, he even bails Bucky out as kind of part of the PR stunt, but, yeah, it, it's, again, it's played out pretty good, where no one is really accepting of him, he, he, like I said, he's trying, he said, I just want to be the best Captain America I can be, you know, if I can just get you guys on my side, it's like, ah, you, you know, I would have actually been on your side until you said if I could just get you guys on my side. Um, so you kind of get a little bit of that playing into it, too. And so, yeah, we do see where this is already kind of starting to fall apart a little bit. Uh, however, because one of them, uh, because when with Isaiah, because 
Bucky encountered Isaiah while he was Winter Soldier and working for Hydra, you know, Isaiah kind of says, look, maybe you need to turn up some Hydra links to find out more about where these other super soldiers came from. So that means they have to look up Baron Zemo, who's still in prison and not free and running the Flag Smashers like I had stupidly said at the beginning of the first video. <sighs> yeah, I know. Sorry. Anyway, see you for episode three. Okay, so here we are with episode three of Falcon Winter Soldier. And yes, I know, last time I said Isaiah Washington, when I meant to say Isaiah Bradley. I'm going to be kicking myself over the next few weeks on that, and you're going to get a running motif through the rest of these reviews. Um, anyway, uh, basically with this one, it's uh, you get a little bit of uh, John Walker at the beginning. You see that he's starting to kind of lose his cool and composure as Captain America a little bit. He's acting way more aggressive when he's uh, interrogating suspected members of the Flag Smashers. We get a little bit of the group that he represents, too, which is the Global Repatriation Committee, which is supposedly helping to work uh, people who were blipped back into society now that they're back. And, you know, the, you, again, we're getting more of the aftermath of the blip where people are out of jobs, they don't have this, they don't have this. And, you know, they're trying to set things back to the way they were five years before, but at the same time, they're hurting people in the process as well. Uh, and also with all of this, uh, as this is playing out, though, uh, that's about all you really get with Walker. And then you get uh, the fact that uh, Falcon and Bucky are, w are visiting uh, Zemo in prison. Uh, only Bu he'll only talk to Bucky. He won't talk to any Avengers. And basically he says, I have the information you need about these super soldiers but you're going to have to break me out to get it. And they have no choice. They have to instigate a prison riot where he slips out. And from there he says, okay, I know where they're doing this. I recruited scientists for Hydra, but they kind of gave up after a while because they couldn't uh, completely do it. But I think I know where this could be happening, and that's on the island nation of Madripoor, which is actually something from Marvel Comics, and it's known for prominently being featured in the X-Men comics. It's a uh, sort of pirate nation, law, uh, micronation type. It's one of those places where, yeah, there's no extradition. Uh, you can basically do whatever the heck you want and get away with it. That's uh, where they, uh, a lot of the major companies have tax shelters and stuff like that. It's kind of like the Cayman Islands or Port Royal to an extent where it's like, yeah, where it, you know, rules don't generally apply. And so, you know... Zemo, because he's a baron and has access to money, can take everyone there, but they have to live under these kind of identities, so Bucky has to revert back to being the Winter Soldier, and uh, Falcon has to become a pimp known as the, uh, Conrad Mack, the Smiling Tiger, which is also a reference from the comics. Um, there was a very brief time where, uh, yes, Falcon worked as a street pimp because he had been hypnotized by the Red Skull with a cosmic cube. Um, so, oh yeah, they get to reference that. And while they're at Madripoor, they get pointed towards this Dr. Nagel, and it's there that they encounter Sharon Carter, uh, former Agent 13, um, who's been there and working as an art dealer because she can't set foot back in the States. She didn't get the clearance that the Avengers got, the clearance that the clemency the Avengers all got. So, yeah, she, yeah, she broke the law, and now she can't go back. So... Sam has a way to try to apologize, tries to get her name cleared so she can at least go back to see her family. And yeah, I assume she does not entirely know what happened with uh, uh, that, you know, a few movies ago she made out with her uncle, basically. Yeah. It was one of those why introduce that romance if you weren't going to completely follow through on it. Anyway, um. So yeah, they're. In Madripoor, a lot of the shenanigans there, they find this Dr. Nagel who is working. He basically, he reveals that the CIA hired him to isolate the serum that they had used on Isaiah Bradley. And then he got blipped just as he was about to do that. When he came back, the program was dead. So this individual known as the Power Broker hired him. And then the Power Broker got robbed by the Flag Smashers. And the Flag Smashers are trying to use it to, you know, go to these GRC camps and get people turned into super soldiers so they can fight back and try to make things back to way, the way they were. And added to that, the way they were during the blip, to, to be more precise, and to uh, added to that, one of them, uh, the sort of leader, Carly Morgenthal, 
uh, had a relative who was dying of tuberculosis. She wanted to try to cure her. Uh, it does not work. The relative dies. And she sort of gets revenge on the GRC camp for letting this all happen by blowing it up. And it's kind of to the disgust of the other Flag Smashers. And it's like, look, we're going to be fighting a war here. These people are going to try to kill us. We have to try to kill them back. So we get a little bit of interrogation there, and then as this group uh, touches down in Latvia, because that's where the Flag Smashers were last seen, uh, Bucky notices some tracking devices from Wakanda, and it turns out they're being followed by Io, part of the, uh, the Wakandan elite guard, uh, who was in the Black Panther movie. Uh, it's not a Koye, it's uh, one of the other chief ones. And exactly, she's not happy because they broke Zemo out, and of course Zemo killed King T'Chaka, and so, yeah, from back in Civil War again, it's like, hey, what are you doing with him? We know you're not supposed to be doing that, so and that's how the episode ends. Uh, definitely the ball is rolling on this one. Uh, they're definitely laying the groundwork for some big things happening. We had some big things happening, and uh, I definitely want to see where this is going out now. This is definitely taking a very dark and intriguing turn, so, yeah, this is definitely good. See you in episode four. Okay, so basically episode four of Falcon and Winter Soldier takes place right after the events of episode three. <laughs> I mean, it picks up right after that with uh, Bucky meeting with Io, who gives them eight hours to turn over Zemo because they, she, he does manage to convey, like, hey, look, we need to, uh, you know, we need to uh, use him for the best we can. He's still kind of an asset to us right now. And they basically said, okay, but after that, you have to turn it over to the Dora Milaje. And then, uh, we, well, just before that, we actually get a little bit of a, a vignette to the history between the uh, Bucky and Io, as she helped kind of purge a lot of the Winter Soldier programming from his memory. So, okay, we get a little bit of that, and then uh, we jump to the present. And in the present, uh, Zemo basically, uh, they managed to track down where this uh, refugee camp was, but they don't know any other information as to where... Uh, this woman who basically raised uh, Carla Morgenthau, uh, Car Carla, Car Carly, yeah, in the comics it's a guy named Carl, so yeah, this is where everything kind of starts to get a little, uh, basically, uh, this woman who died raised Carly Morgenthau, and after her parents were killed, and so she viewed her very much as a mother, and basically uh, Carly's big plan is to uh, she has 20 additional vials of super soldier serum that she's going to inject into other people to make more super soldiers and possibly even to, yeah, they managed to replicate it to the point where they can, uh, you know, make even more super soldiers. And uh, they're, you know, they uh, the group respects the funeral, but as this is happening, uh, Walker and Battlestar arrive too, and they want to go after it, and they also want to arrest Zemo, so they cuff Zemo, they let Sam sort of go in and try to negotiate things peacefully, but then uh, Zemo, er, Walker gets a little too antsy and runs into the fray, and everything falls apart, and uh, in the process, the, uh, Zemo breaks free, shoots Carly, and she spills some of the super soldier vials, and Zemo starts smashing them because he thinks there shouldn't be super soldiers. He's kind of learned his lesson. As he believes, as he says, super soldiers are basically supremacists. I mean, even though Carly is trying to act with the best intentions, she is kind of acting a little fascisty as well. Like, you know, you're trying to take away, you know, like, yes, you know, you benefited from a post-blip world. However, when the blip got basically retconned back, you got left out in the cold again, and it's understandable, but, you know, there are people who maybe also get left out in the cold because, yeah. I, I point to, I think it was Quentin Review's Endgame video, I can't remember if it was Infinity War or Endgame uh, vlog he did at the end of that, he, spo he pointed out, like, a lot of the holes and everything where, you know, hey, you know, if you were 16 when you got blipped and you blipped back, you know, you're technically 21, so you should be able to buy a beverage. Yeah. Uh, all voting restrictions are completely moot. Uh, and again, you know, what if, say, uh, someone's spouse, you know, got blipped, they get left behind, they find someone else, they remarry, maybe get kids, and suddenly the old spouse comes back. Now, yeah, like, there's no winner in that scenario. And, you know, they're trying to negotiate that peacefully, but again, Walker keeps, you know, mucking it up with his, you know, by jumping into the fray, and uh, more fighting breaks out. 
And uh, like I said, and in the process as uh, Carly spills these vials and they get smashed, Walker actually picks one of them up. Uh, and like I said, when he tries to bring in Zemo again one more time, uh, that's when the Dora Milaje interferes and they kick his butt and that finally uh, prompts him to inject himself with this serum, even though it could possibly prove that uh, he's in a very frayed mental state. And then when another confrontation with the Flag Smashers goes down, Battlestar is killed in action when he gets thrown against a pillar. And that snap, it causes him to snap. And he goes after Carly's second command, even though Carly was actually the one who did it. And he beats the guy to death with the shield, uh, possibly even decapitating him with it. And unfortunately, it happens in the middle of a public square where everyone's seen, uh, photographing him with their phones. And that's how the episode ends. Um, so yeah, this was definitely where things are taking a uh, way, way, way darker turn. And everything there is... So yeah, it's definitely uh, going as to where this is... As, uh, I'm eager to see where this is turning up. I'm guessing we're going to get the scene where they're, uh, Cap, or I keep saying Cap, uh, Falcon and Bucky are practicing with the shield pretty soon because, uh, yeah, um, it looks like uh, um, John Walker's not going to be too long for this world, uh, at least as the new Captain America. Maybe he comes back as U.S. agent or the captain or something of that nature. So, yeah, tune in uh, for episode five next. Okay, so the penultimate episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let's take out the title right there. <laughs> uh, basically, I mean, it's building up to the big denouement right now. Um, begins with uh, the fallout of Walker you know, killing a guy in public, and uh, Bucky and Falcon com uh, confront him. Uh, they basically fight him over control of the shield. Says, "Look, you gotta give it up." He said, "No, I'm Captain America. I had to kill him. He killed. He thinks." that this is the guy who killed uh, Lamar Barnes, or Battlestar. Um, but, you know, no, I mean, it was clearly, it was uh, clearly obvious it was uh, Carly Morgenthau. He saw, she was unmasked when she did it. Um, but still, he, he thinks, you know, he had to do it because of what happened. And they eventually this big fight breaks out. Uh, in the process, Sam's wings get ripped off. They get completely shattered. Uh, but he manages to still use his rocket booster and Red Wing to uh, wrench the shield out of Walker's arm, breaking it in the process. Um, basically, everyone's kind of taken into custody at that point, except for uh, Carly. She, she and the rest of the Flag Smashers go deep underground, begin preparing for something. I'll get to that when we get to there, and we'll get to what, what happened with Walker a little bit later, too. Um, but from there, uh, basically, Bucky and Sam prepare to head back. Uh, Bucky manages to track down Zemo and, tra and uh, turns him over to uh, the Dora Milaje, or the, uh, I can't remember what they're called, unfortunately, uh, uh, the Wakandan Guard. So, yeah, uh, that's taken care of. Like, it, it ha actually happens peacefully because uh, it looks like Bucky is going to kill him, but instead, you know, the gun is not loaded. And, you know, even Zemo is kind of content to go peacefully. He doesn't seem to, uh, even he, but he's pointed out, too, that, you know, they're going to have to kill Carla Morgenthau now. She's, you know, too far gone. She's too much of a terrorist. You know, there's no real redemption for her. So, yeah, they turn him over there. And then um, Bucky goes back, and Sam is back in New Orleans. Uh, you know, he's finally kind of resigned himself to sell the family boat, uh, the fishing boat. But <laughs> unfortunately, it's too far damaged, so they can't sell it. It's like, it would cost more to repair it. So he basically has this goal of repair it so they can sell it later. And he calls in favors from family friends. Uh, but before that, too, he also visits with Isaiah Bradley in Baltimore. Isaiah Bradley. <laughs> um, and you know, while he's talking with him, you know, Bradley again goes over the torture that he prescri described and said, but you know, you could have been the new captain. Or like, you know, they weren't ready in the 1950s for a black Captain America, and they're not ready today. And, you know, if you even had one that would make an ideal Captain America, who no self-respecting black man would take it, given it, the state of racial tensions in America right now. So he's kind of right, and it's put Sam in a bit of a headspace. And, you know, Bucky actually talks to him about it. He says, you know what, you know, when I put the pressure on you to become the new Cap, I didn't take into account the, any idea that, you know, you wouldn't, because of your race, 
that the me yeah that was the idea that you know even Sam didn't want to take up the mantle of Captain America because he did not want that pressure on him to yeah exactly he didn't want to have to face a lot of backlash from people who wouldn't accept a black Captain America and it's like I did and Bucky didn't even take any of that into account and he apologizes for it as they uh, mess around with the shield. Also, Bucky hits it off with Sam's sister Sarah, much to Sam's chagrin. Uh, but yeah, they built, they fix the boat, and then Sarah changes her mind and says, "We can't sell it. Maybe now they can try to apply for this new loan. They have a you know things to work a little bit better, and maybe they could work this out." Uh, and kind of in the process too, uh, Sam's been real despondent after the wings got smashed. He didn't even want them anymore. Uh, he took the shield back, uh, even though Walker was supposed to turn that over. So, yeah, let's get back to uh, John Walker and what happens with him. He's basically court-martialed. He's not, you know, put in jail, but he's given a dishonorable discharge, and he can't be Captain America ever again. And he's supposed to turn over the shield, but he doesn't have it. And he leaves the courtroom, and he's with his wife, apparently. I didn't know he was married, but... Um, and uh, he's approached by a woman who is uh, from the comics. It's uh, she's played by Julia Louis Dreyfus. It's Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine. Uh, I'm just gonna call her uh, Val Fontaine for this. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, and she has an offer from uh, apparently the power broker because again, it can maybe inject more of the super soldier serum. Uh, and after visiting with uh, Lamar Barnes's family to again say, "Hey, I'm going to bring his killer to justice." I'm not going to. We then see him in his uh, in a shed making his own Captain America shield. So yeah, uh, and as to who the power broker is, it's basically tipped off because um, the flag smashers are back and uh, they got Batroc Zelipa to um, steal. Some of the, or get, uh, procure some of the uh, super soldier serum again. It seems like now they're in league with the power broker, who is Sharon Carter. Um, yeah, movie Bob's right on this one. In case you didn't know, uh, there's a scene, very short, very very short scene where she's talking on the phone to a guy in an Algerian prison, and uh, that was obviously where Batroc was last seen. So, yeah, I think you can pretty much uh, draw the through line right there. Um, as to whether or not another character who is supposedly supposed to show up is going to, I can't say for sure. Maybe not until the final episode, but yeah. Uh, basically, Sam has begun preparing to assume the mantle of Captain America now. He, he's content with getting it. He's gotten new wings, apparently. And just as this is happening, he finds out that the Flag Smashers have pained in New York City where there's this conference over the state of... Uh, the displaced refugees, uh, basically they're going to get rounded up and sent back to their home countries, even though some of them don't have home countries anymore. So, yeah, <laughs> again, uh, oddly touchy subject there, but you, um, anyway, there's this summit that's supposed to pass this act that's going to you know, send them, like I said, and as we as the episode ends, uh, the Flight Smashers initiate their plan and you know, the power goes out in the meeting room and it looks like it's about to be taken over. So, yeah, that's basically where everything goes. Uh, the scene of Walker making his own shield happens in uh, the post or in the mid-credits, so just so that goes. But, yeah, it's uh, definitely building up to a big denouement. Uh, don't know if Walker's going to be full-blown U.S. agent at this point, but you never know. So, uh, see you all for the finale. Okay, so the finale of Falcon and Winter Soldier is one world, one people. Um, basically, uh, you know, because of this attack on New York, they're getting, uh, everyone's getting ready. Um, I'll just say this right now, Sam is full Captain America at this point. Um, it was basically hinted at the last episode, yeah, but you see him right there. Uh, Bucky is already in New York, and Sharon Carter is also there. Uh, apparently Sam managed to pull some strings to get her in there so she can get her full pardon. Um, though again, uh, something about her which we'll touch on later. Um, basically, like I said, he's all in the full Captain uh, America. I don't have any pictures for this, so uh, basically uh, I'll just throw, I don't know if I'll throw something up, but here. 
If I do, uh, here it is. Uh, basically, yeah, like I say, he's in the full regalia. Um, the Flag Smashers, of course, are sending Batrock after Sam because uh, Batrock has issues with Sam. He wants to take, personally wants to take down the Falcon. Uh, basically uses that. Uh, they use a phone call to Bucky as a misdirect to get to a two-tiered escape plan, one via helicopter, one via uh, basically some commandeered police battle vans. And they're trying to get out of there. And uh, Bucky winds up going after Carly and her crew on the ground. Sam eventually takes off after uh, the uh, chopper in the air after it capacitates Batrock long enough. Uh, they go after this and uh, along the way, uh, NYPD helicopter gets damaged. Uh, Sam helps rescue those pilots. Uh, it's there that people start recognizing him and calling him Captain America and correcting anyone who says it's Black Falcon. Really, Black Falcon. Um, anyway, uh, Bucky manages to catch up with the ground uh, escapees. And as this is happening, uh, you know, Carly sets one of the prison vans on fire to try to kill the hostages inside. But interference arrives in the form of John Walker. He's not quite U.S. agent yet, but uh, he will soon be. Uh, like you said, he's constructed his own shield. He's hell-bent on targeting Carly Morgenthau. Uh, they're fighting. That enables Bucky to at least free the other prisoners. However, uh, there's, uh, there's two vans with prisoners on it. And he takes down a few more of the Flag Smashers in the process. Uh, Bucky does. Um, Walker uh, faces Morgenthau. She manages to knock him unconscious. But he revives long enough to see her pushing a van full of prisoners over an edge, uh, basically over like the side of a bridge. And he and he's smart enough to know that you know the revenge isn't going to help anything, so he opts to try to save the prisoners. So I guess that's a redemption arc. Like that part, like I said, uh, that's one of those parts that felt rather rushed to me. Like maybe again in a movie setting it would feel a little bit better, but it didn't quite work here. It just kind. Of, it felt a little kind of come out of nowhere, but um, as this is happening, um, Batrock re-enters the fray, and after they, and Falcon, or, sorry, Sam comes along and uh, saves the, uh, helps lower the, uh, helps free the other, uh, sorry, he helps free the van that uh, Walker managed to save just long enough to stop from going over the, yeah, he managed to stop it from, the van from falling. Um, it's then that Batrock intervenes with some smoke bombs, they chase the other Flag Smashers in there, and it's here where Sharon uh, winds up confronting Carly, and this is where it's officially revealed that yes, Sharon is the power broker. Um, and also, Batrock was a double agent working for the power broker, boy, he didn't know who uh, he or she was at the time, and when he finds out, he demands four times the money, and Sharon shoots him. However, in the process, Carly winds up shooting Sharon, and then Sharon shoot, and then when Sam confronts Carly over everything, uh, Sharon winds up shooting him, uh, shooting Carly because Carly's about to shoot Sam. And that kills her, and he takes, uh, after everything is settled, he, you know, Sharon gets to, uh, Bucky leaves with Sharon to go to the hospital. Uh, Sam, you know, brings Carly's body outside and basically says, look, talks to the GRC people, and he said, look, you know, you call these people terrorists, you call these people, you know, refugees or everything, and it's like, you know, these are people who, whose lives got upended, they managed to build new lives for themselves, and now you're punishing them for doing that. And, you know, I understand that, you know, there's people who got blipped and then were unblipped five years later, and also, you know, had their lives upended and, you know, I hate to say ruined, but yeah, you know, it's like, well, you know, I mean, the Senate, the lead senator is Senator Patch, and he, you know, he says, "Well, what about the people who you know came back after five years and found someone else living in their home? Are they just supposed to be homeless?" He's like, "You know, look, I understand this is complicated, but you know, you could fix things. Like, you know, we have money to take care of this. We could build new homes for people. I mean, if we could build new homes for people, we could give people food. We can give all this." You know, you need to understand how to distribute it, and it's going to take time. I mean, look at me. I'm a black guy who's now calling himself Captain America. There are people that will never acknowledge me, but we have to work to get better. We have to, That will prevent the rise of the Flag Smashers 2.0, because the Flag Smashers 2.0 are going to be even worse than these ones were. And it seems to kind of get through. And again, it seems that largely people seem to be accepting that he, uh, Sam is Captain America now. Um... 
And as this is happening, though, some of the other Flag Smashers get rounded up, and they're being transported to the raft, the big super penitentiary. However, that transport is, uh, it winds up exploding, and it turns out that Zemo's uh, butler planted explosives on there. He's been pulling strings, uh, possibly at the behest of Val Fontaine. I hope you don't mind if I'm not using the whole name there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then we kind of jump to a few days later. Uh, John Walker is not cleared. He's not he's never going to be Captain America again. But because he's working with Val and her group now, he's going to be U.S. agent. So that's still official right there that he's U.S. agent. Uh, he, uh, and, you know, there are things... Because uh, she and as Val, Le as Fontaine leaves, she points out things are going to start getting very weird. So I'm guessing this is probably going to lead that little thread is probably going to lead more into secret the secret invasion story that they're going to do. So I, I'm I'm wondering if that's where that a lot of that is because um you know in the comics Val Fontaine is a character who was the primary love interest in the Jim Steranko Nick Fury series. And, you know, she's kind of bobbed in and out of that and, you know, that sort of trustworthy, you know, that sort of love interest, but who isn't fully trustworthy type scenario character. So it's entirely possible that, you know, with Nick Fury, you know, being a scroll on Earth and still being up and dealing with S.W.O.R.D. and the scrolls up there, it's, in, you know, like I said, I wonder if she's maybe working some sort of counter scroll uh, initiatives there. Uh, anyway, we then... Uh, Sam talks to Isaiah Bradley. Uh, he, Bradley admits that, you know, Sam is special, uh, but again, points out this isn't going to be easy, but Sam says, don't worry, I'm working to make things better. And he even points out that they now have a wing in the, uh, at the Smithsonian dedicated to Isaiah and his friend, and the parts, and the other people he, you know, who also received super soldier serums to, you know, for their efforts, and so that people will remember them now. They're not going to be completely forgotten in the dustbin of history. Uh, and then we get this kind of tacked on ending just before the credits where uh, it's, you see, um, you know, uh, Sarah Wilson is reopening her family's fishing and catering business. And there's kind of like a cookout celebration and then that's just kind of how it ends. Like I said, that part, like, that really didn't need to be done. <laughs> yeah, I, in fact, um, I'll get to what the mid credit scene is. So yeah, I guess I'm guessing this is probably a while later. Sharon is getting her pardon hearing. She's granted a full pardon. You know, they said, you know, we acknowledge everything has happened. Like we probably should have dealt with this a while ago, but you know, everything got left out in the cold. Sorry about that. And you know, we're willing to bring you back in and work with you. <laughs> you know, you can even have your old job back, and she gladly accepts. Of course, she's still the power broker. She's not dealing with super soldiers anymore, but hey, she's got all access to these government secrets now. So, yeah, <laughs> she's obviously doing things. So, yeah, I know they said there's apparently something like me. I'm guessing Val Fontaine maybe pops up in the Black Widow movie, uh, if that ever comes out. Um, but, yeah, so, again, like I think that would actually serve as a better pre-credit sequence than a mid-credit sequence, just... Yeah, I don't think they needed to do, like, and that's the other problem. Like, this th episode was supposed to be 51 minutes long. It's really 36 minutes long, and then big ending tack-on scenes. And it's like, that's where the dragging part kind of, yeah, hindered this a bit. Like I said, I think if you just work this as three, yeah, two, if you're just taking all those parts and put them into movies, I think this would have worked a lot better. It probably worked, it probably could have streamed by it. I aimed a lot of the fat out of it. And I think it would have worked, like, it probably would have helped in this a lot better. Like, I enjoyed it, but I still, again, that's like, ooh, time, yeah, pacing got really wonky during bits of this. So, yeah, that's why I'm, I gave it the B. Uh, the episode overall, like I said, uh, good, you know, the good climax. For the most part, you know, it's nice to see them wrapping things up there. But, again, it felt, way, you know, the ending bits felt a little too tacked on and kind of a, hey, you know, Come on, let's wrap this up. We don't need, you know, it's like really, or it should have maybe ended with, uh, again, Sam taking the Bradleys to the wing of the Smithsonian. I, you know, we didn't need that little bit at the, the boat. It just, it, it adds nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. And 
Yeah, that's just kind of where it left me feeling a little cold. So yeah, that's why I wound up giving it a B. Time to do battle with those big time action heroes! Giant Spider-Man and Giant Wolverine! Fire Sting! Grab the big time battle grip and you'll control the big time battle action! Big time action heroes! Make the big guys walk! Make the big guys talk! Let's go, punk! Big time Wolverine slashes! Big time Spider-Man smashes! Spider-Man and Wolverine, the biggest big time action heroes ever! Each sold separately. Okay, so the next video up is probably is going to be the random trade review on Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Um, after that, <laughs> um, okay, well the next Marvel series uh, that debuts is Loki, and that's not until June 11th. Um, there'll probably be some other reviews in there. Obviously, um, I'm reviewing the Netflix original movie Stowaway. I was originally going to do that on Tuesday, but now that might not be put. That might get pushed back to either Wednesday or Thursday. Um, basically, um, as I'm recording this, uh, on Wednesday this week, I, uh, I got my second vaccination. I don't know if you could... Hmm. Ah. Anyway, I got my second vaccination, so I am fully vaccinated. And, uh, you know, the first shot, you know, the side effects were there, but they kind of dissipated after about an hour or two. Uh, the second one, they hung around for more than a day. Um, I, I, I was starting to come out of it early this morning, and I was still kind of under it. I didn't completely quite get out of it until almost noon. So, yeah, I, I lost uh, quite a lot of time to get things done. So uh, I'm going to try to see if I could take at least a couple more days to uh, unwind and uh, recalibrate a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the next movie review will be the Netflix original Stowaway. I know it's out now, but it'll be probably out um, either Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Uh, again, um, Mighty Ducks Game Changers, I'll probably do... I, there, I'm not doing like uh, what I've done with uh, the Marvel shows, so you won't quite get the episode blow by blow, but uh, it'll be more of a uh, series overview when I do that bit. So um, that'll be done I'm guessing at some point in May as well uh, by yeah, let's see I think we're up to episode five yeah I want to say five of that so there's five more weeks until uh, that wraps up and then um, of course there'll be more random trade reviews and everything in there um, wrestling is on the 16th I don't know what else. <laughs> there will probably be something else. Maybe I can find something else to do, hopefully. Uh, it'll probably be more golf or something. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, see you all next time. Hey guys, remember, you can help support my channel at patreon.com forward slash sleepytimeforcat productions, where you can help request a movie, even if it's something like, say, Sonic the Hedgehog or the next Purge film. I'll review it.